make sure that economic growth continues, but that all New Zealanders get to have a share in it. Question number four, the Honourable Judith Collins. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister of Housing and Urban Development, does he stand by all his statements in the House yesterday? The Honourable Phil Twyford. Yes, in the context they were made. When he advised the House that, quote, the types and amount of risk the Crown may take through the buying of the plans initiative were assessed as part of a business case I took to Cabinet, end quote, what was the specific amount and types of risk? Sorry, um, could the member repeat the question, the latter part of the question? <laughs> When he, addressed, uh, when he advised the House that, quote, the types and amount of risk the Crown may take through the buying of the plans initiative were assessed as part of a business case I took to Cabinet, end quote, what was the specific amount and types of risk? Well, as I said uh, yesterday to the member, the specific amounts will vary from development to development. Um, but there is an in-depth risk assessment process in place for each development, and I'll, I'm happy to share the elements of it with the member. The Kiwi Build unit advised me that risk is managed through an initial assessment of each project, a shortlisting process, a second review of the proposal, a workshop with the developers. The Kiwi Build unit then evaluate the amended proposal. There is then an opportunity to clarify any issues raised. The, the project then goes before an evaluation panel. The evaluation report chair prepares a final evaluation report, and then the contract itself is negotiated. When he told the House yesterday that, quote, residential developments across New Zealand stall because developers struggle to find finance, end quote, what makes him think that he is a better judge of the solvency of a building company than those banks that are currently refusing to provide the finance? Well, I reject the member's uh, assertion in that question, but I want to make it very clear in, in, in relation to this question and questions that the member raised yesterday. In the case of developer insolvency, the Crown through Kiwi Build carries no risk whatsoever. When we buy off the plans and uh, underwrite the Crown simply uh, makes a commitment for houses that have been completed and are ready for sale. So if the developer becomes insolvent, there is no risk whatsoever to Kiwi Build. And in relation to, constru in relation to construct rising construction costs, which is one of the other risks that the member has raised, again, there is no risk whatsoever to the Crown through Kiwi Build. Those risks remain with the developer. Before the member calls, David Bennett will stand withdrawn and apologise. I've just warned his leader for something and he's repeated it. Withdraw and apologise. Judith Collins. Thank you, Mr Speaker. When he told the House yesterday that new houses are to be built in the Mangere development, did he know that part of that land in Stage 1G is still privately owned? and his premature announcement has likely increased the price that the Crown is going to have to pay for it. Well, I'm happy to look into that matter that the member raises. Before you announce it. Maria Lugic. To the Minister, why is the government working with the private sector to build more affordable homes? Because, Mr Speaker, many residential developments across New Zealand have stalled because the developers are struggling to find finance on acceptable terms. That's exacerbating the shortage of homes that has built up over the last decade. This is why KiwiBuild steps in to A, enable developments that otherwise would not be undertaken to be completed, B, to speed up developments to increase supply faster, and C, to enable the construction of affordable homes rather than the McMansions that young Kiwi families cannot afford. Mr Speaker, to the Minister, how robust is this assessment process that he's referred to today for Kiwi Build when part of the stage 1G of the Mangere development that he announced the other day is actually still owned by a private owner who has, although approached by Housing New Zealand, decided that the price has just gone up? Well, I think rather than take the member's assertion at face value, I'll get the facts and get advice on exactly what's going on in relation to that development. 
Mr. Speaker. What advice has he had on how the Kiwi Build Unit manages any potential risk? Mr. Speaker, the Kiwi Build Unit advises me that there is a robust process to manage any potential risk. There's an initial assessment of each proposal, and the Kiwi Build Unit selects potential developers to enter the process. Next, the unit holds workshops for responses order, which meet. Order, order. I think the member has read that before. May you what are, what are the risks of not undertaking the buying of the plans Kiwi Build programme? Well, the main risk is that we'll continue to see residential developments across New Zealand stall because developers cannot get finance on acceptable terms. These homes will not be built, they will take longer, or they will be too expensive for the families who need them. And this would mean that we would not be able to increase supply of modern starter homes for young families. This government is committed to building affordable homes for young Kiwi families. Question number five, Willow Jean Prime. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is 